name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, that must have been some storm to blow up there on the Sea of Galilee that even these lifelong fishermen were scared to death. Now, I'm not sure what kind of help they expected from Jesus. Maybe he would wake up and start bailing the boat with them, or maybe roll a little harder towards land to get there safely if they could. But judging by their reaction, I'm pretty sure they didn't expect him to stand up and tell the wind and the waves to knock it off and the wind and the waves to obey it. Who is this guy? What sort of man is this that even the wind and the waves do what he says? That's sort of the opposite question of what Jesus asks. Why are you afraid, oh, you little faith ones, you of little faith? Faith and Jesus go together. A little faith means a little Jesus, a Jesus who maybe can't really save us. A little faith says, we're dying, but Jesus is just sleeping in the boat. We're all going to die. A little faith worries more about the waves than it trusts in Jesus to save them. A little faith thinks it's all doom and gloom and that Jesus is not going to come through, that he's sleeping on the job as it were. What sort of man is this? Well, if we knew that he's the kind of man that could stop the wind and the waves just by speaking to them, well, then they'd have great faith, wouldn't they? But, says Jesus, you have little faith. You and I, little faith. We have little faith because little faith trusts or worries about things more than it does about Jesus. Instead of Jesus being the big deal, we worry more about the wind and the waves, or maybe it's money, or maybe it's an illness, or maybe it's a, some relationship, or maybe it's the craziness that goes on around us in the world, whatever it is. We worry about that stuff more than we trust that Jesus is going to work out all things for our good because he's the Savior. Little faith says Jesus is sleeping on the job and he's not going to help us out. Little faith is faith that's mixed with too much despair and doubt. <coughs> And you know what needs, you know what little faith needs to save us? When we have little faith, what we need is a big Jesus. Now, at least the disciples knew enough to ask Jesus for help. Lord, save us. We're dying. We're drowning. The boat's being swamped. And Jesus, notice, doesn't get up and say, now listen, you of little faith, if you would believe more, if you had more faith, if you trusted me better, well, you know, then things will work out better. So why don't you get bailing and get rowing and see if you can get yourselves out of this since you don't think I can do it. That's not what he does at all. He stands up, wind, waves, quiet, and silence. A great calm. Because Jesus doesn't save them because they have great faith, obviously, but he doesn't not save them because they have little faith or little trust in him. He doesn't save them no matter how much faith they have or they don't have. He saves them because he's Jesus, and that's what Jesus does. He came to save us. Like Jonah was tossed overboard to make the wind and the waves stop, to make the storm end, so Jesus came for the same reason. Well, not for the storm. The storm's easy. Jesus wakes up, says, quiet, and it's quiet. Rather, Jesus came to be thrown overboard from life, to sink down in the depths of our sin and death, by shedding his blood on the cross. And then, like Jonah was swallowed by that fish, Jesus swallowed by the grave for three days. That's the sort of Jesus he came to be. That's the sort of man that he is, the one who saves us from sin and death. And when Jesus plunges into our sin and death, those waves stop. Sin and death no longer has power over you. It cannot accuse you. The devil can't accuse you. God's judgment can't hurt you. That storm is over because Jesus was thrown over the side into sin and death. And just like the fish spit Jonah out after three days, death couldn't digest Jesus either. And so it spits him out after three days on Easter when he rises from the dead and shows that he has all power over sin and death for you, for your sake, for your salvation. Now, I said a little earlier that faith and Jesus are connected. Jesus is a big Jesus who can stop the wind and the waves. Sometimes we, we have little faith. So what Jesus does is save us, even from our little bit of faith, 
by keep saving us over and over and over. And as he does, our faith grows and grows because we realize Jesus is bigger than our faith. He's bigger than winds and waves. He's bigger than sin and death. Because that's the sort of Savior he is. So we can ask with the disciples, what sort of man is this? Well, he's the sort of God-man in the flesh that can pay for the sins of the whole world by dying on the cross. What sort of man? The sort that can rise the third day and give us everlasting life. What sort of man? The sort that can take us with the water and the word of the font and splash on forgiveness and life and salvation and make us God's children. What sort of man is Jesus? The one who could take his word, put it in the mouths of our pastors to forgive our sins and to declare to us good news that our sins are forgiven. What sort of man? The one who can say to bread and wine, now this is his body and blood for us to eat and drink and give us the promise that when we do, he will raise us from the dead on the last day and give us everlasting life, which, as we heard, means forever and ever and ever. Jesus is that sort of man. The one who is God and man who is the Savior for us. He's not sleeping on the job. He's never sleeping on the job. Rather, he's always teaching us to trust that he's got this, whatever your particular this is. He's got this because he is the Savior. He's the God-man who gives his life into death and rises again the third day and gives us everlasting life. What sort of man? The Savior kind. That sort of man. In the name of Jesus. Please stand.